Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative, and today I'm excited to introduce version 1.2 of the Divi Contact Form Helper. This is a huge update, and I'm excited to show you everything that's new. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click the link because this gives you the written description of everything that's new with some screenshots. I start off here, is this a booking plugin? Because once you see all the features we've added in this update, it basically has become a full booking plugin, and that's going to make some of you very happy. Um, but there's a lot of other things, so we're gonna start at the top. Now the first thing really is interesting because it kind of makes the Divi contact form like a grown-up actual contact form. It makes it feel like a normal contact form. Let's take a look. So I will actually show you here in a website. So I've added some fake numbers in here. Um, but I'll show you why. So basically, in the back end, now you can click on Forms, a new menu item, and now it will list every contact form module that's on your website. Isn't that cool? So it gives the title, so that's the title that you've added in the admin label. And just a little note, it won't show up here until there's actually a form submitted. Um, so anyway. All the new things that have been added is this this whole page, right? So first of all is the ID and the title, the number of entries that it has received, the number of views, so now we can know how many people have viewed it and how many have submitted it, which gives us a conversion rate. Um, and then unique views is like, you know, like let's say someone viewed it more than once, right? So the unique views would, would be lower than the views, okay? Conversion rate, so obviously if there were 10 entries and 20 views, the conversion rate is 50%, right? Kind of makes sense. Um, we have unique conversion. And then we have last entry as a timestamp. And then we have some action. So view entries, I can export a CSV of these entries, and then I can click on view form, and it will literally go to the page where the contact form module is located. So again, it makes it feel like the Divi contact form is Growing up, it has its own list of forms and all this information about the forms. Now, here's a big one that we were getting from some people who basically didn't, basically wanted to turn off like the IP address and um, things like the browser and operating system. I think basically now we've added a setting in the module that says um, collect user agent details, and when you turn that off. It, it, the form will not collect those, okay? So we hope you all appreciate that. We've added that for the uh, GDPR especially, okay? Show and hide form after submitting the form. So oddly enough, when you submit a form, the form itself hides, but if you've had a title, it stays there awkwardly. And then the success message appears or whatever. But the title awkwardly stays there. So now you can just say hide form title and that will hide as well, all right? All right, file upload labels. So we were getting some questions about translations in our plugin, and we didn't necessarily add a translation file because it's it's only like a few words that are even relevant. You gotta remember a lot of the translations, they're not relevant to us because we're adding like into the contact form. But one thing that was is related to when you're uploading files using the, the file upload field, right? So accepted file types, now you can write whatever you want there. You could write it in a different language. The maximum file size, you know, you could write that. You could either write it in a different language or write it in your own words. Like it says no file chosen, like you might wanna say, I don't know what else you would wanna say, but you get the idea, now you can. So we've added that, that option, all right? All right, so this one here, show hide labels for check boxes and radio buttons. If you remember, when you had those, um, it's not the same as like a normal input field where there's like a placeholder and then the label above it. So we missed adding that before, so we've added that. Now you can actually add the label above the check boxes or hide it, okay? The next, the rest of this update is basically dedicated to the date and time picker. And let me tell you, we have added a ton of features. So some start with something simple, disable weekdays. So if you wanna disable that someone cannot select 
you know, Sunday or Saturday or Tuesday, whatever, right? Disable the past day. So you may, in this particular form, you may never want past dates to be able to be selected. So turn that on. Here's an interesting one. So fixed or relative dates that you cannot select, whether that's a minimum date or a maximum date. So starting date and ending date for like the date range that someone is allowed to select. Now, fixed would be like, you know, what's today, May 26. So if I would put like, well, I want them to be able to choose, you know, the last five days. So I could say like May 21st, 2022. Well, that's a fixed date. In the future, it's always going to be May 21st, 2022, right? And the same for like a cutoff date. If, if there is like, like, let's say you have a date picker for registering for something. Well, then sure, pick, you know, set the maximum date to fixed and that date, you know, beyond that, they can't, whatever. I don't know what I'm saying. But relative means it, it changes based on the current day. So if I say, I only want to let, let someone choose like, schedule a meeting with me in the next three days well then i would put plus three as the maximum date so they would not be able to select anything beyond three days from the future and i could say zero because i don't want them to select in the past for the minimum and again this is relative or fixed so relative you would say minus or plus and then a number all right so it's really cool like isn't that the coolest thing <laughs> Same for, yeah, it's okay. I'm showing this as minimum and maximum. So like starting date and ending date range that's allowed, okay? Now, we also have available and unavailable dates. So think of this as like, like let's say I just have, um, I just wanna not be able to select like major holidays, let's say. So I could go through and select or actually write the dates of those holidays, like December 25th, right, or something. So that would put that is as unavailable, and you could separate them by commas. Now, on the other hand, if it was more of like that kind of thing where there were only a few dates to select, well, then I would probably want to use available dates. Okay, does that make sense? You wouldn't use both. You would use one or the other. Like, like you know, if you want someone to... I don't know, contact you or schedule something with you. You could choose one or the other, whether it's available dates that they pick from or unavailable and they can pick everything but those, okay? The exact same thing applies to times. So we're getting into some of the time picker now. So we're talking about dates now, times. Um, the same exact thing. So with times, okay, so there's look, looking at this here, minimum and maximum times and then available and unavailable times. So more than likely, you would probably want to put like minimum time, like let's say you want to schedule meetings with your clients, I don't know. Like just say 9 a.m. for the minimum time and you know 5 p.m. for the maximum time, something like that, okay? So that when they go to the date picker, it won't have like all, you know, all 24 hours to pick from. And, and it's the same thing with these times as I was explaining with dates, available and unavailable times. You know, whether you want someone to, you know, here's a list of times for the day. You can only pick three or whether you can pick all of them, but, you know, don't pick one o'clock or 12, you know, that kind of thing. All right. Um, let's see. You could do that. I guess that would work good. Like if you wanted to nine to five, but then don't pick a lunch break. You know what I'm saying? You pick unavailable time. Okay. Now time steps. That's also related to this. So by default, I think it's 30. Yes, it's 30. So, you know. That's 9, 9.30, 10, 10.30, 11, right? You could change that to any number, 12. I mean, it could be, it could literally be like 9.12, 9.24, you know, 9.36. You could, if you put 12 in there, so it would be the time steps. Or if you wanted it 60, you know, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, right? Or every two hours, right? So that's how that works. All right, now date and time design settings. Wow. I am not going to be able to have time to even explain all of these, but just look at the list. The background color, margin padding, and border and box shadow for the main thing, okay? Then we have the date picker and the time picker width and height, right? So you might wanna change how big it is. Okay, this is all new. 
all of the text in the date picker, you know, month and year text, days of the week, calendar dates, current date, selected date, available dates, unavailable dates, same with time, you know, selected date, time, I spelled, I said, I'll fix that, but available times, unavailable times, all that, right? Design settings for all of that, okay? All of that. I guess I should have been showing you, but you, you, you probably got the idea. So if you click in here in the module, date picker, all these settings, margin, border, radius, stuff, right? Date, all these things. All these color pickers, a lot of color pickers. Yep, okay. And then I could probably show you what I was like describing if I were to add a date picker field. All right, so if I turn on date picker field, oh, here's another one, um, locale, so the, you can use it um, right to left. You can set it in line. Oh, and we've added, I guess I should have said, we've, we've updated the, the interface to have these tabs. So here's general, right? And then date, all of these things, okay? And then time, all of these things here, okay? Some other improvements, a confirmation reply when, when, when the confirmation email would go out and if you would reply to that, it would actually go to the site admin address, which was fine most of the time. From now on, it will go to the address in the module. So wherever the original admin email was going, that will also be the email that the confirmation email replies to, okay? Um, we have some other improvements here with the placeholder field, the text area minimum height, um, the field icons position, they were a little goofy. I, I think something happened with a Divi update because we did have that right, but anyway. Um, the field, when you add icons to the fields, they look a lot better now. And I said the direction right to left. And then the theme check, we always check for Divi or Extra or the Divi Builder, things like that. And there were some other fixes. There was a fix um, with um, conditional logic with the file upload. We fixed that. And some other file type issues that we had. Um, but yeah, wow, that was, that was it. Um, the change log is very big. So here it is. Um, you can read all of these if you want to. But there we go. That is what, it, this is one of those updates where you kind of have to explore for yourself. Uh, a lot of these things, it's hard to just show you. I mean, I could show you, but it's going to take forever. Um, putting in the dates and the times. Remember to write the dates and the times in the same format that you have selected. So, for example, year, month, day. Well, then when you're writing like dates, like um, available dates, you know, write the year and then you know the month and then the, the day you, you, you know what i'm saying so just use the format that you've used here now like i said i could show you these but it's just a lot like i, th I hope that all makes sense a lot of these are kind of boring looking fields here you can pick fixed and then put the date or pick relative and then say you know plus three or whatever like that okay in each of these all right, that is it for this. I hope that you guys enjoy that. We already have a full, another big update mapped out for 1.3. So yeah, we were excited to get this out. And yeah, like I said, it kind of makes it a full booking plugin. It also makes it like a mature contact form now. It's like it's like the Divi contact form has grown up uh, with our plugin. So yeah, this is exciting. I got to update all of the product pages and stuff yet. Um, but again, it's one of those updates that you kind of have to play around with to really get all those settings with the date and time picker are kind of hard to show quickly. All right. Well, we hope you all enjoy this. Um, continue to let us know your feature requests. We take all of them and we're adding to our list constantly. It's getting bigger and bigger. Um, but yeah, we're, we're, we're also um, getting some of them off the list with this update. All right. We'll see you all in our next video.